In the previous lesson, we declared a new component called myLink that returns a hyperlink. Now, you might have noticed that you have this little squiggly line appear in VS Code, and this is actually a violation coming from ESLint. As a reminder, ESLint is a popular linting library. It analyzes your code and looks for common errors or mistakes or uh, inefficiencies that are possible to correct. And it is actually built into Create React App, which is why this error is automatically appearing in our editor. Now, if for some reason you are not seeing this error pop up, it might be because you forgot to install the ESLint extension in VS Code. We walked through this in the uh, setup section of the course. So to do that, you can always go to this extensions tab right here, look for ESLint and install it. But if we hover our mouse over the specific violation, this helpful box that pops up will tell us the actual issue. You'll notice it says using target blank without this additional attribute of rel equals no refer is a security risk in all the browsers. So this is not actually anything that has to do specifically with React. It's a specific browser security issue uh, with using the target attribute. So all we have to do to fix this is just to add that little attribute. So let's go ahead and do it right here. So I'm going to add rel, and then I'll add no refer. And once I save that, you'll notice the error will go away. Now, what I want to talk about in this lesson is a quick note on formatting JSX. One very common convention that you'll see, especially when your JSX starts to become pretty long like this, is breaking it up across multiple lines. And in order to make the uh, transpiler understand your actual return value, especially if it's split up across multiple lines, what you'll often see is we'll place a starting parentheses before the JSX, which will allow us to break it up across several lines, and then we'll place an ending parentheses uh, at the very end of the JSX. And it, it's the presence of parentheses that allows the Babel transpiler to understand where the JSX begins and ends even though it's broken up across multiple lines. So the way it looks is something like this. I'm going to force a line break right here. And you'll notice we're going to automatically get this error because uh, ESLint as well as Babel is going to think we're returning nothing on this line, right? It thinks that it's just an empty return value and it doesn't understand that we're still trying to return this JSX on line 10. So what we can do is create an opening parentheses here and then after our JSX right here, we'll do a closing parentheses, and you'll notice that the issue automatically goes away. But in order to make it even easier to read, what is a common convention is to indent the JSX right here. So we sort of have this visual indicator that this is where everything begins. This is where it ends. We can, in fact, even put, I think, a comma here if we want to. And inside the parentheses is where we actually have our JSX. And the beautiful part is now we can break it up across multiple lines because uh, Babel understands that this is the start and end of it. So for example, if I wanted to move this text of go to Wikipedia onto the next line and then move this closing tag right here, this is totally valid. And you can see it's a lot easier to read. It's a lot easier to discern where the anchor tag starts, where it ends, the text in between it, as well as the unique uh, and individual attributes that we place on it, right? So a common convention you'll see in uh, the returns values of uh, React components is to see the JSX wrapped in parentheses. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.